Hey, babies, we are back. It's the Marriage and Money podcast with yes, Egypt and Mike. Um, but it might be mostly Egypt today. Yes. And if you see that I sound a little funny right now, for those that are not watching, it's because... Are not watching? Because this is a podcast. But, oh, right. Because you YouTube and you I do podcasts. I keep forgetting because I'm looking right at the camera. We're also mm. a podcast. See, but, I thought I was the one that was hurt. But, okay. Well, just tell them what happened. So... On a construction site, I got pretty uh, dinged up. I got elbowed and my tooth became loose and now it's really bothering me. So I went into the bathroom and pretty much yanked it out. And it's right in right now temporarily. But our guests are so amazing. I said I still have to be involved, but don't be surprised. If I bow out, I'm still sitting here, but I get quiet. But I'm I'm happy that you're here because like this is this happens like it's life, guys. Things happen. You got to roll with it mm-hmm. instead of bowing out. Just show up as your authentic self, mm-hmm. which is partially what I wanted to talk about. Because y'all know if Mike can't talk today, I'm talking. I'm gonna get it all out. I'm gonna talk about everything I want to talk. Taking the bell. Okay. All right, I'll keep it tight. I'll keep it tight, baby. Because mm-hmm. I know you sure you might as well just go ahead and turn his mic off, no, KD. No, since he can't. You better stop. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I've been through worse. We're going to get through this. So and so here's what I wanted to touch on a bit today. We live in this new world, right, where social media is kind of governing people's popularity, how well your business can do. And, and in some ways, folks are allowing it to define them, their self-worth, mm. how they feel about themselves. Perfect example is I was just reading an article where, and this was an error, but Instagram shut down a man's account And when they shut his account down and he had to start all over, he was in such a dark place, I guess, Mm -hmm. determined his Mm self-value and self-worth by the number of followers and likes uh, and people he could reach that he offed himself. He literally committed suicide. And so I had to sit with that a, a minute because I have found myself at certain times in the day. Where I'm like, what's going on with my account? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Instagram playing too many daggone games, mm-hmm. you know? And it it does in some way start to affect your attitude, how you approach life, how you're feeling every time you pick up your telephone. And this is what we have to catch ourselves in. Um, it's it's a wonderful thing that has created opportunities and businesses for people, mm-hmm. uh, but it can also be toxic if you don't keep perspective. Mm-hmm. So we have to remember that we are not defined by our social media accounts, followers, likes, views. Mm-hmm. That's not what defines us. We're not defined by our bank accounts, our resumes. We are defined by the sum of our deeds. Yes. We are defined by yes. the amount of lives that we can actually touch during our brief time here. And it, whether that's one life or 200,000 lives, you've done your job. OK, mm-hmm. never allow yourself to get into a space where someone takes your power. You feel like they took your voice and now you you just got to off yourself. Mm. To me, that was devastating to hear because, you know, I was, my account probably is still being suppressed by Instagram. (laughs) I mean, I have worked for years and built over Mm -hmm. a million followers and they suppressed me. One one post had like 200 likes Uh and I'm literally on there like, are y'all playing games? I know where y'all live. (laughs) <laughs> it's a business. It's a, it's a business. But, it, but yeah, what it was, was I posted about um, sex trafficking. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, that post was fact checked. How do you fact check someone's experience mm-hmm. dealing with a possible sex trafficking event? But they fact checked it and marked it out like like um, if it showed up in someone's post, it showed up as though it was a lie. It wasn't true. And then somehow that activity Suppress my account for months Mm -hmm. and it was a dark place. So what I learned from that, because I I try to to find the blessing and the lesson in everything, good or bad, that happens in life. And what I learned is, you know, I got to start treating this social media just like I treat my money. Diversify. Right. Mm. (laughs) Diversify. So for those of you out there, if you you've just built a following on one social media type, then Mm -hmm. you need to go and look, look, look. Twitter is being restored now. Get back on Facebook. Get over here on YouTube. Get on uh, what's Isaac's uh, platform? Fan base. Fan base. Mm-hmm. We have started a fan base account, yeah. y'all. Get on a subscription service. Get on Patreon. There's a new platform which I'm actually enjoying called Lemon Eight. Have you checked oh, that out? Yeah. I love. I'm loving that. That's like Instagram meets uh, Pinterest. Mm-hmm. So it's you know I, I really yeah. like that one. So there's so many other options out there. What I suggest right now, while you can, is you diversify your reach. Mm-hmm. That way, if if you feel silenced in one fashion, you still haven't lost your audience. But certainly 
recognize that when we came in this world, we didn't come in with a telephone. Right. You know what's important too, babe, <laughs> now that you've brought that up, is that I think it's a must. He speaks. Yeah, I told you I'm going to bow out soon. <laughs> I think it's a must because, you know, with certain states already mm -hmm. banning TikTok, right? And a lot of influencers was making a lot of money from mm -hmm. there. Some of them are going crazy right now because it no longer exists. It no longer exists. What is your backup plan is basically what I'm saying. If all of these social media sites cease to exist... What's your backup plan? Start setting that up now. Absolutely. But um, it's it's interesting you brought that up because there's a whole conversation just about censorship. Mm -hmm. And you, what we have to recognize is that when we signed up to participate on these platforms, this is their business. Mm -hmm. We are participating and we're helping to fuel it with all of our content. But this is still their business. Yeah. I mean, and they have terms of service and which basically tell them they can do anything with your account at any given time. So it's a privilege. Guess what? Is what they what they're telling you. Guess what? So, yes, Our next baby. guest. Can I finish? You, you can't just. I just I just have to get this on my. You're going to finish. But I have to say this. Our next guest is very familiar with that. And we have something in common. We both went viral due to the help of Viola Davis. I just want to throw that out there. Yep. <laughs> this man's teeth are literally falling out of his mouth. And I have one podcast. One one opening. Blame it on whatever Katie get, put in my cup. All of my thoughts out. <laughs> and he shuts me down still with three teeth in his mouth. I just want I just want to point that out. I just I love you too, baby. Mm -hmm. You feeling good? Yeah. I'm proud of you just for being here. Snagalicious. But since he shut me down, y'all. See, they don't like that in the comments. <laughs> they're getting you because they're saying stop shutting Egypt down. And they told you talking about land and gold. They told you to let me uh, get up on this microphone, didn't they? When all your teeth are in your mouth. But all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I done gave it an elbow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, let's bring our guests in. Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. They messed up a mic. Now they, I got can, a, they can still a hear you. Mic. They can still <laughs> hear like you. Hanging. We got the thumbs up. Okay, y'all. We ready? We ready. They come all the way here from Washington, D.C. Yeah. They are an amazing family with quite the story to tell mm -hmm. and they're going to tell us about their social media journey but first just recognize Keir and Noemi Gaines here from Washington yes. D.C. this is an amazing couple they have built quite the brand and quite the legacy mm -hmm. on social media um, but but I'm loving their brand and the things they're doing they've got the whole family involved but I don't know if everybody knows that Keir is a licensed therapist mm -hmm. okay and Noemi is a lawyer but it sounds like she's quit her job because they're doing so well on social media, y'all. Help us <laughs> welcome them to the show because we, we want the secret, y'all. We want the monies. Remember my tell like, hey, y'all. Uh -huh. Y'all got on the airplane. Y'all flew all the way down here so you could be here with us. Of course. Yes. Face, face. Mm. So it be yes. first. I'm loving that. Thank you so much. Wait, so DC, yes. you, you're actually into, you know, I used to live, um, I haven't been here in so long. Silver Spring, Maryland. Yeah, mm. right yep. outside of DC. We yes. used to live there too. You used to live in Silver Spring? Yep. Okay, yep. now I'm really going there. Are you familiar with Paint Branch High School? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never went there, but I know a lot of people that did. Mm -hmm. It's not too far. I skipped so much school, I probably never went there either. <laughs> I did. I apologize to my teachers, but <laughs> look I'm, at you now. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at now, perfect C plus student. So <laughs> I would. I'm carrying the show by myself. Don't be happy for me. I would be happy for C pluses at high school. <laughs> do as we say, not as we do. When exactly. Kids are watching. Exactly. Anyway, you guys have really built quite the platform and brand for yourselves mm -hmm. on social media. Thank you. I yes. mean, really. It's been a whirlwind. It, yeah. it has. Like, like, can you <laughs> a think good that? One. Yeah, for sure. You, you've only been married four years. Almost. Yeah. Right? Right. Ooh. Is it three? No, it'll be four. It'll be four. Yeah. Oh, October, yeah, yeah. We're just going to go with that. Mm -hmm. I like that y'all can, can debate about that versus getting mad that you didn't remember. <laughs> we both forget. <laughs> We're both forgetful. Yeah. It don't matter. We love each other. And that's but, all that so, But I'm thinking about your journey then. It, it really didn't start too long ago. Mm. And it, it, walk us back a bit. Who said, <laughs> let's bring the whole family on social media? Whose idea was that? That was me. Okay. Mm, yeah. And what'd you say when he said it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that reluctant. Yeah, like, it was ah. like, I, I want to support you, but where are we getting this money from? Because uh -huh. the first thing was the camera, and we were brickety broke. And I'm mm. like, well, how? Uh, all right, I mean. And okay. then you're, you're an attorney, so yeah. you were a practicing attorney. Was I? Did I graduate? Oh, I just graduated. 
I had just, this was 27, I graduated in 2016 and we started in 2017. Okay, so just graduated okay. from law school mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now you left your law career. Yes. All that money that you, <laughs> that was put into law school, but you're doing well now. Oh, So very. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, guys, I, I want you to just, because folks are watching and they're tuned in like with big ears right mm -hmm. now. They want to know how they can build a brand and build a social following the way you guys did mm -hmm. with social media changing now. Do you think that's even possible because the whole landscape's changed? Mm. I'm not sure. I think she'll have a different view of this than I do. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's possible in the same way because we were talking about this mm -hmm. five years ago. You can go viral yeah. and people will repost you yeah. everywhere. People yep. don't really go viral anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. And what bothers me is when I'm on social media and I see these people who build a business off of teaching other people how to build a social media business, but that's their entire business. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And you don't know where they got their information from or anything. I say all that to say, uh, I would just, I tell people to be authentic to themselves, mm -hmm. be authentic to your experience, tell your actual story, mm -hmm. let people see who you are, let them be familiar with those parts of your life. And you open the door, you let them in. I think sometimes folks just trying to throw it out there and grab mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have them have mm -hmm. this gravitational pull. I don't know if it works, but if you yourself, you got to be willing mm -hmm. to accept the fact that folks ain't going to like you. They're okay. not going to like everything. Right. Right. Yeah. Gonna like They're it. always going to have opinions. Mm -hmm. what, was there something that was said or a comment that stuck to your ribs at some point? I think we always say authenticity for real, but for real. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people talk about, you know, showcasing their real lives and the real struggles and how they get to from point A to point B, but they're not really, you mm -hmm. know, being honest about it. And I think for us, it was really luck. And I think people think of the word luck, but they don't really think about what it means. And mm. we always say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. And I think we've been doing this mm -hmm. for a while. We had gone, which we call viral, a couple of times, but mm -hmm. we didn't have anything that stuck. Mm -hmm. so. And I think once we started showcasing our real lives, so those couple of times towards the later part of the beginning of our you know, journey, when they saw that we had consistent, you know, mm -hmm. footage, we had, you know, consistent and real conversations about our marriage, parenthood, things that we were really going through. I think that's when people mm -hmm. really decided to stay and we were mm -hmm. like able to build our platform. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and so when you talk about building your platform, building your brand, what conscious steps did you take when y'all realized, wow, we just made more off of this one post <laughs> than I made in my entire salary. Mm. I don't know what your your rates are, but I'm I'm thinking at least for a month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we keeping it a buck? Yes. Mm -hmm. When I first started, when that one video I did blew super big and you we gotta, got you gotta tell them which video it is, because People are probably looking at you like, he looks so familiar. The mind of the video <laughs> that went crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it was a video of me holding my daughter, mm -hmm. walking through the street. No shirt on. We just coming from a pool party. And I just tried to close out the episode of our vlog. And I just started talking about fatherhood. Mm -hmm. And I said, y'all see me, me and my wife. And just like that picture right there, we all happy and smiling. And it's good it pop it out. And you know, it's all perfect <laughs> sitcom. What y'all don't see is the immense amount of work that it takes to yeah. make this thing happen. And I said, also, you know, the men who are generation before us got raised by the men who are generation before them. And those men ain't no warm love like mm -hmm. that. So we kind of, we, we, we building a railroad while the train on that bad boy. And I just, I don't know. I just got in my head and started encouraging people to go to therapy. How many Took hits? Off. Oh, I can't tell you. Millions. Millions. And he Millions. almost didn't put that in the vlog. She told me yep. to put mm. it in there. So we, before we even did all of this, we did like lifestyle vlogging. Like that was really popular on YouTube at the time. And he thought he was talking too much. And I'm over here sitting. I want to hear this black yeah. man talk about this. And I'm like, of mm. course. As the checks run away. Right. right. <laughs> With the spoon. Right. Yeah. And he thought, <laughs> I remember I was sitting behind him. I used to watch him when he would edit the vlogs. I'm like, babe, like. This is amazing. Put this back in. And I don't think it blew up. It took like a year. Mm -hmm. We posted it a couple of times. And a year later, somebody must have gone back and looked at it. You know and boom. George Floyd. Yep. George Floyd recently been murdered. And I mm -hmm. think the world was in a space to yep. hear black men and hear that perspective mm -hmm. in a completely mm -hmm. different way. This is the part that makes it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Because I think prior to social media, there were not enough images, not on television, not in the magazines of the black family shown in a positive light. Mm -hmm, sure. I mean, look at that picture over there on the board. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's two black families yeah. who mm -hmm. love each other. Mm -hmm. We care about our children. We want to raise them right. We want to give them opportunities that some of us didn't have. And so now when we can open up our feed and see the humor, right. see the truth, mm -hmm. you know, see fathers who really like 
who really love their children, who are really present. Mm -hmm. It's the antithesis of, of what we've seen in in mainstream media, Absolutely. but we continue right. to see in mainstream mm -hmm. media. And I think that's what's necessary. That's what keeps us going. Honestly, it's that that type of content that keeps me going back to social media, right. because other than that or having to do it, you know, for my career. I'd rather be fully present with my children actually mm -hmm. being in the experience. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Instead of filming the experience. Right. But this, but people need to see us. Absolutely. They need to see you as well. Yep. Yeah, my homie, uh, shout out to Glenn Henry, Belief and Fatherhood. Yes. Uh, friend of both yep. of ours. Yep. Belief had this thing where he posted and he said, people always ask me why I'm always shooting my family. Mm -hmm. Why I'm always posting my family. Mm -hmm. I do because you don't. Right. Exactly. I didn't have these examples on TV exactly. growing up. and. The beautiful thing about social media, to your point, is there's no network that's curating anything. Mm -hmm. It's direct. You get mm -hmm. to see the good, the bad, the ugly, the in between, mm -hmm. and you get to grow and be a part of these people's experience. Mm -hmm. right? So I think it's dope. I love it. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a form of censorship going on right now with the algorithms? Or are y'all afraid to speak? <laughs> oh, nah. Listen, we're going to speak bravely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it's censorship as much as it is um, just like this purposeful or this intentional curation where some people just fall in between the cracks. Mm -hmm. Similarly to your post, mm -hmm. I had a post about suicide. Mm. And it was getting no plays. Mm -hmm. no, I got 400,000 mm -hmm. people on Instagram. You mm -hmm. mean to tell me only 200 people saw this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's this fear that if you talk about suicide, makes people want to do it more. So you don't, don't say that word. Don't have mm -hmm. it anywhere. Mm -hmm. As a licensed therapist, I tell you that thinking is wrong. Mm -hmm. When people have suicidal thoughts and ideations, they you lean into to talk it. About it. Yes. You yeah. talk about it more. Mm -hmm. right. And, uh, you know, it just shows that the people who hold the power don't always have all the right information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. But the fact that you just said that, um, it, it, get, it lends credibility to something, a thought process I've been having. I don't know if you've been having the same process, but... That there's literally somebody or somebody's or some bot, some place that say keyword suicide. Nope. Mm -hmm. Keyword sex trafficking. Nope. Mm -hmm. Keyword black love. Maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes yep. on Wednesdays at five o'clock. Yep. You know that. Do you feel that way? I do. I don't think we we all we fully understand the beast we're dealing with. Nah, we don't. And and we have individual unique stories that aren't always, you know, they're not gonna get a hundred thousand likes mm -hmm. on Instagram, mm -hmm. but there are stories and somebody can relate and vibrate with them on some mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. I think it's happening. I think these social media platforms are also trying to figure out what works. They don't know everything. Mm -hmm. It's a it's an evolving yeah. process. Yeah. Bring back the original Instagram. That's what I said. Oh I my to get God. A that says, bring back the original Instagram. It was lovely. It we was wonderful. Just saw posts as they post. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like right now, when I go into my feed, I see people that I don't even follow. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I don't see anything from the people mm -hmm. I chose to follow. Right. Yeah. I see violent sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how did this get in my feed? I don't, I don't like or watch this. I don't want yeah. this. I feel like it's being programmed, mm -hmm. you know? Meanwhile, what, the things that I do follow and the topics I type in that I want to see, they don't pop up, yeah. you know? So it's it, there's some frustration about that. But since we have y'all here and y'all are such a beautiful couple mm -hmm. and a beautiful example of what, of what we want folks to see. That came from your soul, bro. That's all he could say, really, right now. That... That was that was that mid Sunday service vibe right there. Wow. Tell the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh. Came well. from the earth. Love it. Mm. Uh, well, how, how did y'all meet in the oh, first place? God, so tell geez. us your love story. We gotta know. So I'm gonna start because he all oh, I don't. You can chime in if you feel like I'm doing the most. He thinks I do the most when this I tell this story. Two separate these stories. She, then you can say your it opinion. It just makes me look like the villain. Cause you were. <laughs> so I'll start. So we met at this bar. So we have like a mutual friend. She was actually coming to D.C. from Atlanta and she was staying with me. And she had like this free a happy hour at a bar. And she invited all the people that she knew. And personally, I was at a time where like I wasn't dating. I was in law school. I really mm -hmm. wasn't looking for anything. And I go in and, you know, there are a couple of guys there. I see a, a one guy. He's cool. You know, we just talk, whatever, exchange numbers. He gets me a drink. And then Kira walks in and he's like in a bow tie, like in DC at this time, it's very casual. Mm -hmm. So he's looking all fancy, you know, just looking real GQ. good. Yeah. Very. Yeah. I had and just come from work. <laughs> I was working in the community at the time. Isn't that attractive? Working yeah. in the community. Mm -hmm. so I was well dressed 
ass, but yes. I was a broke man. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't look it. He didn't look it. But he was also very popular. Everyone knew him and I had never met him before. So I see him walking in and I whispered to my friend and I'm like, who's that? She's like, the dude that you're talking to, that's his frat brother. Like, relax. I'm like, wait, so what are the rules of this? Mm. Like, can I talk to him? Because he just had this aura about him. So I think I said hi, or maybe I didn't, but we were exchanging like looks. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of the night, maybe we we're in a different spot. He still hadn't talked to me. So I'm like, okay, I just, you know, I got to be the, the person to start the conversation. So I push an ottoman to the back. Like, he keeps looking back. And there's like an ottoman between us. So I just scooted over. You recognized her? Like, as oh, yeah. you saw her I bright did, light across the room? I, I, I saw her. The, the first... See, don't do that. Okay. See, okay. see, I'm okay. already being villainized uh, here. I don't hear her. But I hear her telling her truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's more. Wow. You get your there's truth more. Yeah. I hear her. Wow. Wow. You I haven't even truth. gotten to the villain part. Keep so long going. story short, you know, we start talking a little bit and then the night is over. We go, we go our separate ways. So I hop in the car with my friend and I think I see you on the way out. And he's saying his goodbyes. I'm like, you're not going to ask for my number? Like, mm. What's up? Can I can I answer? Go that? ahead, go what ahead. What she doesn't know is I saw that car pull up, and I told said frat brother, I was like, "Hey, you got her number? You want to take her seriously, or is this just like whatever?" He was like, "Nah, if you want to holler at her, holler at her." That all right? So she pulls up, and she said, "You gonna take my number?" I was going to do it anyway. Yeah, I was in the car. What you mean? When I'm I saw like, y'all pull up, I knew y'all were going to. Well, go sometimes ahead. we got we got to give them space, give the men space to do what they want to do. Uh -huh, okay, uh -huh. but. I it was my intuition <laughs> kicking in. You know, yeah. I felt it in the back of my soul. Please, baby, continue. Okay, so then he hits me up that night. What did you say? Here it goes. You this up? is where the story deviates. I, he that, said, you up? That and I said, yes, happen. and I'm going to sleep. No Good way. Night. That did not it happen. Did. All right, All right. All right. let's hear your side of the story. Because it's always, oh, the truth is in it. between y'all sitting uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. So what? everything she said was facts. I don't remember hitting her up on some you up. That's not even my swag. I, I wouldn't, like, I met her and hit her up same mm -hmm. night you up. That's not the way I'm going. So what what she, it, the other part she's going to tell you is we saw each other later on a few months ago. It was a flip cup tournament. Mm -hmm. He Guys never texted me back, girl. by the way. I didn't, I, I, yeah, I didn't hit her. Who does it sound like? I didn't. Mm. I didn't. Sound like I Mike. didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Like I didn't. You know, you in your mid twenties, you in DC, it's people everywhere. You get numbers all the time. Mm -hmm. you, I didn't know that this vessel right here was all of this and more. It was just, you know, I just messed up. <laughs> you person. see how he's cleaning this up, right? So ahead, we, we had the, the flip cup part. tournament, and I think we won. My team won. No, we won. Okay, I could believe that. And <laughs> and then she walks up to me. She was like, oh, "What did you say, babe? You asked for my number." And I said, oh, you don't remember me? You have it already. Like, check your phone. <laughs> check your phone. I scroll that joint. I was like, no, I don't. Oh. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so I did. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Yeah, but, but we so ended up talking. And then it was like, what, three-hour conversation? Yeah. It was just a real, like, really cool conversation. That was we my hung old. Out. Like, yeah. my old mama, you different. Okay? Yeah. You know, now, like, what, everybody what else. What do you mean she's different? Because did you know in that conversation. Wow, there's a connection here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sensitive to that type mm -hmm. thing and you don't feel it that often. Like it's you can quantitatively, you can have a lot of people that you date. Mm -hmm. Qualitatively, there's not a lot of people that, you mm -hmm. know, you touch you right here. Right, right. Right. And just the conversation, it was flowy, it felt good. Mm -hmm. It was, you talking about diversifying, we talked about politics, we yeah. talked about our histories, we talked about education, we talked about economics. It mm -hmm. just bounced naturally and that caught my attention. Mm -hmm. yep. And then, felt you know, like home. felt like home, man, that we went out on a date. Come on, what's up? Was that a date? No, that it face. Was, right there. <laughs> to join the Georgetown? What? That you were late. He so he told me to meet him at this like really nice restaurant in Georgetown, and I'm thinking he's about to take me to dinner. It was a meeting location. He had just come from eating. Where'd you come from? Wait, wait, from another date though. Oh, I forgot about wait, that. Yeah. Excuse me, no, no. excuse me. What, you had just that? come from eating, but were you on a date with someone else? Was I on a date? Egypt? Yeah. No, no, no. I would, I would never come from a date and be on a date. <laughs> would you do that, Noemi? <laughs> Don't even start. <laughs> Don't oh. even start. <laughs> You, you were on I think I was single. I was on a brunch date uh -huh. and he hit me up like, hey, what are you doing? So I left my brunch date. Wow. And well, this happened to him too. <laughs> wow. I mean, well, wow. Don't even do that. He was on a date with someone else the night he met me. And he left the date that's actually a fire story, though. <laughs> he knew he had a better option. He mm -hmm. took it. No, he didn't have that option that night. Oh. He had an option. He didn't leave him my telephone number. You didn't, did you, baby? Mm. No. What you like? Shot for it and didn't get it? 
He can't talk because... Oh, uh, you know what? That might be I'm for the best. Shots. That's why I'm, I'm going to pay for this later, just so y'all know. This is all coming full circle. He's tabulating back. in his head mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a foot to the neck tonight. And he's going to say he was sleeping while. <laughs> but, so, all right. So, y'all finally make the connection. How did... How did you know she was the one. Oh man. He hates this question. I don't I don't believe in the one, man. I think the one is situational because her being the one for me at 30, she wouldn't have been the one for me at 25. Is that when you met? How old were you? 28? Late 20s, yeah. yeah but I think I was in a space. She called me at the downward slide of my of my my mid twenties, we out grow here. up. Yeah, <laughs> enjoying. I, don't say out here enjoying. But it's like better I was, though to it get is. it out your system. Oh, mm-hmm. like, I'm not mad at it. I don't Absolutely. judge people who you know. Hey, I, back in the day, I was a player, or back in the day, I was this because you got to get it out mm-hmm. your system yeah. to know what's going to work and what's not going right. to work. And I think that yep. stuff builds character, right? Absolutely. She mm-hmm. would be the woman that you're sitting next to Mary right now if she wasn't on a date with somebody. <laughs> 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 but I left the date as soon as he hit me up. I was like, oh, bet. Let me leave. Cuz watching this joint right now, like, damn, this one. <laughs> yeah, we never said that out loud. Well, mm. hey, it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, that that was the whole story. It came together in a very non-traditional way. Mm-hmm. And even like we were dating and we were having a great time and and we were like, nah, this ain't working. We tried to break up and yeah. then we got back together and then we got pregnant. Yeah. Mm. So y'all got pregnant before you were married. Yeah. Oh yeah. Our, years our baby before. was at the wedding. She was messing walking with around my dress. talking. What, mm-hmm. Was she the flower girl? She tried to be. She was two. You can't tell a two-year-old to do anything. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. t- so talk about that then, because having a kid and being married is already mm-hmm. tough. Mm-hmm. But having a kid before you guys are married, there's a lot of judgment that can come with it, which I don't know why anymore, because it's not a brand new thing. World you know, there, expectations. there are more people. Right. Mm-hmm. Listen, I, I'm definitely in favor of raising a family in a in a marital environment. Mm-hmm, but sure. there are a lot of people who are in a marital environment. And it's toxic and children so. are exposed to that yep. versus those who are raising children and they're just in love. And we, mm-hmm. we living together in sin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're in love, <laughs> y'all. But the kids are coming out, you know, better in a healthier situation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, judgment free. But what did y'all experience just that journey for you? I think we definitely dealt with a little bit. Not so much judgment, but expectations. I come from a very traditional family. Mm. I'm of Haitian descent. I'm a first generation American mm. here. So a lot, and I'm Catholic as well. Mm. So a lot of people are like, well, when you're getting married. Like, in and, struggle and, different, right. 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 And I'm like, I didn't always see the happiest traditional situations growing up. So mm. us not being married wasn't something that scared me. The one thing that did scare me, though, is we were kind of in a place where we were seeking individual therapy at the mm-hmm. time. So I think we both were really exposed to our own trauma from our parents, from prior relationships. Mm-hmm. And he was still in grad school getting his master's in therapy. Like this was before he was licensed. Mm-hmm. So while he was seeking individual therapy, I'm seeking individual therapy. And I think that's around the time where we started going to couples therapy, not premarital couples therapy, just trying to figure out how are we going to co-parent? Mm-hmm. That's where we were. We were in the like, I don't know if this relationship is going to work, but this baby's on the way. And all of this well. trauma that we're going through is spilling into like our stuff. Mm. But to be so young, how old are you guys? You're in your thirties, right? Yeah, I'll be 34. Oh, I just turned, I just turned to age. When I just 37. Turn? 37. Yeah. Listen, after a while. Senior right is kicking in already. Listen, yeah. after a while, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, with kids, it doesn't matter. Between 30 you, usually and you hit at least wash. 40 before you start trying to say it doesn't matter. Just uh, so y'all know. I got pre That's doesn't right matter. around when I hit. I was like, it doesn't matter no more. It just doesn't matter. I'm not even a bit. But no, the, the reason I ask is because you guys seem very wise mm-hmm. beyond your years. Very much so. To even know that therapy was something you should do as you're entering this new part of your relationship, mm-hmm. I mean, that's really elevated thinking. Mm-hmm. There are people three times your age who still can't even have the the conversation about therapy. Mm-hmm. And they're just walking around unhealed, walking mm-hmm. around wounded, wounding other people mm-hmm. because of that. But what did what was the biggest thing you learned? In, and you're a therapist yourself. Am, so there's man. another question. But <laughs> what was the biggest thing you guys learned together as a couple in therapy? I think the biggest thing I learned, because we might have different takeaways, is that our stuff, yeah, it's your same yeah. thing, man. Our stuff is not, like, the the beef we had between each other ain't had nothing to do with each other. Mm-hmm. It was all the stuff 
from our lives in the past before we met each other. When mm-hmm. we first got to therapy, we had this dope black male therapist. Shout out to Curtis Clay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, uh, he sat us down. He was like, well, what are the issues y'all have with one another? He was writing them down. We were going for it, man. We were, we weren't in a good place. <laughs> no, so that wasn't a happy therapy mm-hmm. session. That was, uh, I'm, I'm beefing with you. I don't even want to look at you right now, mm-hmm. therapy session. He writing them down and writing them down. At the end of that list, he real, he helped us realize none of that stuff had to do with directly with the conflict we had between one another. Mm -hmm. It was stuff from my past about my mom, stuff from her past about her parents' divorce, stuff with my past being poor and living in the projects and being scared not to have money, Mm -hmm. what she want for her life, and just all these incongruencies we Mm -hmm. had were crashing up against one another. And it it took the personal sting out of the conflict of the relationship when I realized it's not about her, it's just that the relationship is a conduit to the frustration mm-hmm. that we have mm-hmm. and everything just explodes when you got all that prior trauma that has. And, and, and yeah. that's why generational trauma real, is man. a real yeah. thing. Absolutely. I want to Mike to talk about our truth about how we dealt with our generational trauma mm-hmm. at, at some point. But um, so so how is it being married then to a therapist? Does he try to psychoanalyze <laughs> every damn do I do? No. <laughs> Tell I mean, your truth, girl. Tell it wasn't. Your truth. Speak your truth. I will say that we are in a we're in a really good place right now, but it wasn't always like that. You know, I think that especially when we entered the relationship, I felt like I was kind of like a little bit ahead. I'd been in more serious relationships when I met him. I had just come out of a seven year long relationship, like someone that I thought I was going to marry at the Mm. time. It, but but you y'all got together. You were in your mid twenties, and you've yeah. been in. So you're talking about a relationship you've been in since you were literally a teenager. Yeah, mm-hmm. freshman okay. year, freshman year of college. Okay. and we had broken up a year before I met him. So was I think a rebound, I, boo. Uh, straight off out. the back, boo. Rebound, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag it rebound, out. boo. It was a couple <laughs> people before you. Um, but That's I was yeah, we were we were in a place we were enjoying ourselves at the time that we met. But I think coming in. To our relation, I didn't come into the relationship wanting another serious relationship. I didn't come into our interaction like looking for something super serious. Mm-hmm. It was fun. I was in law school. I was very serious about my career. And I think at that time, I kind of fell into those traditional roles. Like when you're young, you find somebody, mm-hmm. you stay with that person mm-hmm. and you work it out. Mm-hmm. And I think when that relationship ended, I realized how much time I didn't give to myself to enjoy myself. Mm-hmm. So I think walking into our relationship, I'm like, well, I know what I want. I know these things and I don't I don't think you had been in a serious relationship for a while when you met me either. So I kind of came in setting all these expectations for the relationship. And then when he became a therapist and started like applying those tools, it was kind of like I was the student. You know, I had to kind of take a step back because he was further in his like therapy journey than I was. But does he fight fair though? Or he does, does he no, yeah. or does he bring out break out the textbooks? No. no you not. can't do that. He, it's not fair. He's so like he's he's so sweet. He's really exactly who he he looks like online. Like he's mm. super understanding. Um but I think it took me to be like I don't know what you're talking about. So I need to read up on these books and I need to get ahead of you. But but, no, but, it was but pretty I, chill. I spoke a minute ago about how mature of a couple and just individuals you guys are like well beyond your years. Mm -hmm. It seems like even if you weren't born with the tools, you found the tools. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, pass some of those jewels on to people. Mm -hmm. What is, I'm going to just throw some questions at y'all and I want you to attack it your way. Okay. Okay. And I know you're very good at this and y'all got your own, your own show and (laughs) you know, you got a a huge following. So it, and that's for a reason. Right. What does it mean to fight fair? Mm. Ooh, can I steal your definition? (laughs) So (laughs) Noemi has this definition of love that's so fire. She says the definition of love is giving you the ability to completely destroy me and trust in you that you won't. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's like we both got the keys to the nuke button. Yeah. Mm. We both we both got the nuke button. Mm-hmm. I could say the thing that'll destroy her. Mm-hmm. She can say the thing mm-hmm. that'll destroy me. No buttons are tucked away. We don't need those. Mm-hmm. And from just from my perspective, um, I think holding somebody in the kind of regard where you care about how they feel beyond how they may have hurt you mm-hmm. immediately. Um that's just love on another level to me. That's consideration on another level to me. So that's mm-hmm. that's my personal definition. Your journey different? No, it was the same thing. Because you stole I, her. Yeah, it's my it. definition. <laughs> you stole her. But I, I will but add it's a to good that. One. It's the vulnerability piece. And I mm-hmm. think like, you know, in, in previous relationships, I was petty. You know, I said, mm-hmm. whatever, I'm going to hurt you. And I think we got into... 
I'll, I'll speak candidly. We got into some argument and I must have said something or done something. He got really upset. And he said he started telling me about how much I hurt him. And I had never heard a man tell me like how deeply hurt they were by something that I said or I had done. Mm-hmm. And like my heart broke and I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't ever want to make you feel like that because I love you. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I never wanted him to feel that way. And I think at that moment, not only was I, it was like the trust was there. The vulnerability was was there. And he also had the tools to destroy me at that point. Mm-hmm. And instead of coming back, he's like, wow, that hurt. And that just, that that's just mutual respect. Yeah. That's, that's that real for consideration yeah. for each other. All right, here's another one for you guys. Okay. How do you assert your boundaries if you've already been in a relationship allowing someone to cross them? Mm. In the same relationship or in a different relationship? In the same relationship. You're in a relationship because a perfect example is she said she was a teenager Mm -hmm. when she was in this long-term relationship for seven years. Seven years at that age is a lot of growing. Mm -hmm. You're a completely different person when you come out of that than when you went in, right? Because you literally went from girl to a woman, Mm -hmm. right? And and we're all constantly evolving. So if you've been in a long-term relationship allowing someone to cross boundaries... Versus breaking up, calling it off. If there's something to salvage, how do you reassert, rewind time Mm -hmm. and reassert those boundaries in a way that y'all can effectively move forward? I think if someone came into counseling and they asked me that question, the first thing I would do is have them understand that it's never too late to change your mind about what you are and aren't comfortable with. Mm -hmm. If for the last 20 years, I said, you know, babe, I I need hugs and kisses every day. I need hugs and kisses every day. Mm -hmm. And on year 21, Mm -hmm. you wake up and say, hey, I need you to ask before you come into my space. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You you have the right to get new information Mm -hmm. and change your mind. And I think just understanding that you could put your foot into the ground and hard pivot at Mm -hmm. any moment. I think that's a really good starting point. But can you? Yeah, I, I think so. I think on a lot of things, but how effective it'll be will be almost completely contingent on how receptive your partner is to those. Mm -hmm. You can set whatever boundary you want. The boundaries are for you, Mm -hmm. but you can't dictate whether or not someone's going to respect your boundary. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily owe you that Mm -hmm. unless they feel like they owe you that. So I'm fortunate that I can say, hey, you know, this hurt my feelings. This was cool in the past, but what you did, by the way, as a man, Mm -hmm. as a grown man, Mm -hmm. as a grown black man that's been on his own for a very Mm -hmm. long time, it was very difficult to tell her she hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. I felt like a sucker. It did Mm -hmm. not feel liberating Mm -hmm. in the moment. But after telling her that, um, I, I felt like we just I felt like it was more solution oriented than just cycling a mm-hmm. problem in my head and having the con, you know, the argument mm-hmm. you had with your spouse. Mm-hmm. Man, well, you should have did that. Oh, this is what I'm gonna say if she say this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just being solution oriented and trying to get to the bare ass bottom line of the problem. Oh my gosh, I love yeah. this generation. Mm. <laughs> I love y'all, y'all, I'm gonna quit. Let me hit the charge. Go ahead, hit the back. Come on, we let everybody. And Dad, if you hit it one more time, I have to charge you. All right, that's <laughs> not, I don't want no invoice. <laughs> So, so guys, how do you, uh, you both, your parents are still around, I assume? Hers, hers are, are okay. my, mine is, my mom passed when I was 18, okay, and my I'm dad, sorry. he lives in Nigeria. We don't really have a, a relationship. Got it. So her yeah. parents are still around. Mine are. Got mm-hmm. it. Do you ever, um, you know, I had this conversation with my mom, because their generation did everything differently, mm-hmm. right? And every time you grow... You want your kids to do better, right? Mm-hmm. Do you ever find yourselves in a position position where you feel like you are counseling our, our own elders? Every day. <laughs> you know, I said time. this to my mom. I was like, <laughs> at some point, I don't know what it is, but I feel like the parent becomes the child. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I will still smack you. <laughs> <laughs> I and I was like, I wasn't talking about that. I'm just meaning like the things, the, even the technology that we have. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm try, I was trying to teach her how to get on her social media accounts. And she hit me and she was like, baby, I, I'm doing social mediums. Oh, <laughs> no. I was like, Come on, mom. Mom. <laughs> so, so at some point we become the teachers in some mm-hmm. capacity. Mm-hmm. What is it that you guys feel like you're, you're teaching in that older generation. I will say my mom is probably one of his biggest fans. That is her son. That is her baby. Yeah, that's my boo. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. she's also been really receptive to all of this. And I think that my mom is the first one to recognize that she'll even say, like, I didn't have what you guys have. Mm-hmm. So she's she's watching his video. She's enc- like encouraging other people to watch the videos. I don't think she'll go as far as to go to therapy, but this is her therapy. She watches every single thing that we post, mm-hmm. whether it's so on awesome. Instagram, with pride, Facebook, I'm sure. with pride. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think she's just really proud. Mm-hmm. I think that um 
she she doesn't necessarily look at it like she she was at a deficit. She just looks at it like I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And now that you guys know, I expect you to do better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't have parents around necessarily, but I do have older family members. And for me, it's given a lot of grace uh, with that role reversal, because now I feel like I, I need advice from them, but they're kind of doing this and leaning in when I'm talking. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, what's, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. For me, it's having grace and understanding that my world is different from theirs. Because there are things some family members say, you're like, ooh, you can't, you can't say that on camera. Right. Or like, ooh, you can't right. say that about right. people. Like, that's that's not all right. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you lean in and you have that uncomfortable conversation. And then sometimes you kind of let them cook and you just, you know, when everybody else ain't around, you pull them to the side so mm -hmm. they don't get embarrassed and mm -hmm. feel like they got to perform. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's having grace for the older generation, but still understanding, like, I'm, I'm an adult too. Mm -hmm. I'll give you deference and respect. But this needs to be a space where we listen to each other and stand and firm on that. Mm -hmm. I'm not a kid anymore. I don't have to just do what you tell me to do. There needs to be mutual respect in this space. But I'm gonna correct you when you're wrong mm -hmm. with love, right. mm -hmm. respectfully, of course. I, I enjoy. I'm enjoying. Are y'all enjoying? Are, mm -hmm. Aren't you impressed? Like they're just they're they're pretty amazing. But okay, so social media has changed the game for your family, and you guys found a way to monetize, capitalize, and have this huge voice that resonates. Quite thankful. Mm -hmm. What y'all doing with all that money? <laughs> <laughs> How are you investing it? I need to know. Are y'all doing the right things? Tell me, you, you got the, that first really big check. What did y'all do with it? First really big check? What we do with the first big check? We, I think we paid down credit card yeah. bills. We got out of debt. Yeah. I think that was we're the, the first, first thing. in our family to be in this situation. So we're correcting a lot of mistakes oh, that we've been making. Like being you know, scared of credit card debt. Being, okay. being, you know, investing in ourselves and our children. Like we put our kids in better schools. We moved to a better neighborhood. That was like the first thing. Mm -hmm. We hired an accountant because we got all this money. We don't know what to do with okay. it. Are you still mm -hmm. signing your own checks though? What do you mean? I know you were on Oprah's show, didn't she? What was the name of that show Oprah had? Oh, The oh, Salute and King? Let me tell you, some years ago, I had the opportunity to interview Oprah Winfrey and um, phenomenal. She's, very grounded, she's, very she's dope. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I said to her is like, if you could just give me one piece of business advice separate, you know, from the camera. And she said, no matter how big you get, no matter how much money you make, you sign your own checks and you audit your own books. Mm -hmm. And that stuck to my ribs. Mm -hmm. What... Tell me what you're doing. Please tell me, even with an account, even with financial managers, that mm -hmm. you guys are still, you're not going into it blindly, that you are mm -hmm. still auditing and signing your own checks. We see every every yeah. penny that mm -hmm. comes in and out of our account. And they and everything's itemized mm -hmm. and, and, and separated. What we've been doing lately, because we're at the point now where we got to get rid of money. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a thing. It is. I yeah. thought, just found that out. I like thought being year. rich was mm -hmm. having a bunch of cash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You don't want cash in your account because mm -hmm. the IRS comes knocking at the door at the yep. end of the year. But it's not it's not how much you make it's how much you keep. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so it's learning those things that weren't passed down to us, mm -hmm. you know, generation to generation mm -hmm. about how to properly set yourself up as a business. Life insurance that, policies. That you are a business. Yeah. That life insurance mm -hmm. and how to fund. So teach the people. What you didn't know that you know. Two things. Oh, which camera I'm looking at? Which one? That one right there? Anyway, Are you looking at me? Pick one. Just look with both eyes so, so we don't get confused. Two things I learned, and I grew up in the projects mm -hmm. in Southeast D.C. We ain't had no money ever. Like, this is my first time in my life where I can dig into my pocket mm -hmm. and I, I come up with more than Lent. Mm -hmm. Two things I learned. One is the value of having... Um, a life insurance policy and the mm -hmm. different life insurance policies. There are wealthy people that get incredibly, like way more wealthy mm -hmm. off of life insurance. Life insurance. Mm -hmm. Get life insurance policies But not just life insurance. What type of life insurance policy did you get? It's different. So I got a term life and mm -hmm. I also have this one that I pay into for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And after 10 years, I don't pay into it anymore, mm -hmm. but they continue they to continue pay into to pay it. You. And mm -hmm. after a while, I can cash out and get all that money mm -hmm. back. That in a Roth IRA, mm -hmm. where you can max it out at like $6,900 a year. So got one for the big one, mm -hmm. one for the little one. Mm -hmm. I got one, she got one. We max that money and we take it away from our taxable income mm -hmm. that the IRS like to chew on. Have mm -hmm. you have you guys set up for yourselves a cash balance plan? I Are you know familiar with that? Is, no. Ask, this is this is a little something for everybody, mm -hmm. okay? You are a business, okay? If you if you have an LLC, if you has an, have an S Corp, mm -hmm. you are part of your business. You can set up what is called and know that we are not financial planners. I'm just mm -hmm. telling you what has been taught to me, the way it's been taught to me effectively, and I don't owe nobody. <laughs> I don't owe the IRS, mm -hmm. but this is Kick the that. way 
um, to do it. It's a defined benefit plan. You're essentially creating a retirement plan for yourself through your current income. Mm -hmm. And it's fully tax deductible uh, right now. And taxes are deferred until retirement. Huh. Okay. So the there, cash balance plan is it's called? called a cash balance defined benefit plan. And a portion of that, ask your accountants, guys. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Don't say Egypt told me. I'm telling <laughs> you, ask. Because everybody's situations are unique. Mm -hmm. And so you need someone, a third-party administrator, who is going to oversee your plan. Mm -hmm. They're going to set you up for success. Um, and then, yes, have that account and make sure that you pay all that you do owe. Because the last thing you want to do is be audited. And the mm -hmm. definitely last thing mm -hmm. you want to do is have to pay. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, but but you do it right. If you're self-employed, mm -hmm. which now you are, yeah. right? Six mm -hmm. weeks ago. Please tell me, right? Those checks are coming to an LLC or an S Corp. Oh, yes. you've set up. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now essentially you guys are owners, but you're also employees mm -hmm. of your company. Mm -hmm. So your company can pay you a profit share mm -hmm. and you can contribute to the 401k. So it's a 401k profit share. You contribute your max 401k amount, then the company can match it. That's all tax deductible. Oh, okay. Your company can match it. And then there's a side where the company can save and create a defined benefit plan for its employees as well. And that's the cash balance portion. Mm -hmm. That's just a little bit of wisdom for you. That's the money in the marriage and money right yeah, there. Right there. <laughs> I'm grateful for y'all. Thank no, you so thank much. You too. We yeah. we are inspired by you, by your story. Um, the fact that y'all are so young and y'all are killing it. And we're rooting for y'all. Okay. And I need some tips. I'll go to the social media thing right here. We don't need some tips. Le leave them with one to go on, one to grow on right now. One to go on, one to grow on. Yes. Mm, Russia. Uh I this is this is saying I've been I've been using on my social media. It's come out of nowhere. It's what I apply to my life and people just been reposting it, but you'll never exercise. You'll never, you'll never get stronger in an area that you don't exercise. Mm -hmm. So that means if you, you know, you got short temperament, mm -hmm. use little pieces of conflict in your life that are non-consequential or, you know, very, a very little consequence to practice being mm -hmm. less temperamental. Mm -hmm. If you're impatient, take little spots in your life to practice being more patient. Will it happen overnight and you'll wake up and be different? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. If that's what you're going for, you won't feel like mm -hmm. you failed. But year after year, month after month, situation after situation, you'll notice that you exercise in those places and you'll see that you got stronger. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can grow or go off of that, but it's been working <laughs> for me <laughs> in my life. Yeah, it's been, it's There's a lot really of wisdom in that. Mm -hmm. For sure. What about you, It's Noemi? kind of along the same lines, but I think a lot of people look at the social media growth and where we started. We didn't start where we are now. Oh, no. And I think it's so important. Just start. Mm -hmm. Just start. You can That's build on it as you go. That's a good one. But I just think just start start little. I'm telling you that it'll fall exactly where it needs to be. I think we had faith. We had very little to go on mm -hmm. and we just followed our gut. We followed what God told us to do. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the right reasons. I'm grateful yeah. for y'all. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that I learned from this is stretch yourself, mm -hmm. you know, stretch yourself beyond what you've been taught, mm -hmm. you know, from your parents, even. Be willing to grow and recognize that we all come with something, some kind of baggage that we got to unpack. Absolutely. And it's your choice every day to choose happy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's your choice every day with how you want your relationships. What what fruit do you want to bear from your mm -hmm. relationship? Mm -hmm. Well, then you can't grow it from a tree that's toxic. Right. So you got to chop down that tree sometime, get down and replant mm -hmm. some seeds and sow yeah. seeds. So it'll grow into a beautiful, fruitful tree. And that is y'all. Like You're that. doing the work. I love that. You're doing Appreciate the work, y'all. Okay. It is the mm. Marriage and Money Podcast. Tell them where they can find y'all real quick before you we go. You can find us on Instagram, Kier Gaines, K-I-E-R-G-A-I-N-E-S. We'd love to have you be mm -hmm. a part of the community. Noemi Gaines, N-O-E-M-I-E -E, Gaines. And then also on YouTube, Karen Noemi. Noemi. Yeah, mm -hmm. follow us. We have this thing called a sit-down talk, very yep. similar to what you all do. We talk about love, talk about marriage. We yeah. keep it 1,000. Yeah. Yes, you know, very not just the highlights. Yep. We talk mm -hmm. about the, the ugly real, stuff. Real, mm -hmm. real, 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 the real, arguments, real. everything. Y'all yeah, <laughs> sure. follow them. They're good stuff right here. Great content and funny. So <laughs> I'm funny. I want, want y'all to check out um, our <laughs> show on HGTV, Married to Real Estate, and hit the subscribe button right now because if you want to continue to see content we need to know that you're here mm -hmm. okay Straight let like these that. advertisers know I'm sorry did I say that out loud <laughs> marriage <laughs> money podcast <laughs> this is what happens when Mike doesn't talk <laughs> <laughs>